All right, welcome to this week's Beyond Nemesis podcast, everybody. I'm one of your hosts, Mayor Reynolds. I'm Jade I. I'm late again. <laughs> what like those people just introduce themselves as late and they don't even say their name? I'm late. Uh, that's it. <laughs> All right, so we got we got some interesting stuff for you this week, as we do every week. Uh, why, why don't we kick it off with this one? Because I, I don't know where this fits in otherwise. So did you see this story about the, the Diablo uh, tattoo beta access? No, okay. but how? What? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Blizzard has a uh, tattoo artist team going across like the United States and then into Europe, like on this tour. And if you get like an official Diablo uh, tattoo from this, uh, you know, Blizzard tattoo artist crew, then you, you get a guaranteed access to the Diablo 4 beta and a free copy of the game when it comes out. This is the first beta access done via tattoo, I think, that I've ever uh, heard of. You think, would you, not too bad. Are you down for that? You're going to do that? Depends on where it's going, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I assume it's your choice. I mean, that's actually kind of cool. I mean, like, imagine just having that little piece of ink history in your life just because, you know, it was a marketing scam. Or not scam, but marketing ploy. I, I think mean, that's if, still kind of cool. If you're honestly. a Diablo mega fan who's been thinking about doing this anyway, it's a pretty cool reward. Like, you know, if, if you were going to do it anyway, I don't think I, I would be pushed over the edge to do it unless I was already, you know, willing to well, do it. If, uh, I mean, you know what? I'll take it back. If Diablo 4 isn't on Game Pass, then I'd probably do it. <laughs> Call up Phil. Like, yo, real quick before I get this tattoo. Uh... Phil, I'm about to ruin my body if you yeah. do not put this game on, on Game Pass. I'm surprised <laughs> I, I... more people haven't, like, done some, like, very outrageous form of, like, petition or of uh, rallying just to, like, get what they wanted out of the video game. Uh, I think they do on Twitter every day, don't they? <laughs> we know Twitter isn't a real place, though. Yeah, well, that's just it. It's that, you know, that's... That's as will as far as most people's action goes of these days. It's like if they put it on Twitter, they put it on Facebook, and then beyond that, they're not willing to do anything to help whatever cause it is, whether it's a game or whatever. You know? Yeah. Well, do you think we'll ever get that way to a point where it's just like some radical? I think we've seen some bright radical stuff. Like we see we see people swatting other streamers and stuff like that. I think. Yeah. I'm not I'm not downplaying downplaying the uh, the death threats that get that happen. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, man. This is a hot take. Actually, I don't think these devs get death threats. I think that most of them probably make that up. I I, I, I mean, I'm sure I want it, evidence. It depends on I got my first death threat in first grade. Right. Some kid on the playground said, I'm going to kill you. You know, that, that's a death threat by definition of the word that that's a death threat. So it's so yeah. it's like, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, how do you how do you perceive it? You know, who how was it presented to you? You know, if you get 100 DMs that, that literally say, you know, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yeah. yourself, kill yourself. It's probably going to have an effect on you, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, 100 um, percent. That, that should I, I, I agree with that. Like, if yeah. it's if it's like that volume of it, yes. But at the same time, I'm I'm skeptical. I mean, like a lot of them say like, oh, we've received like a lot of threats and stuff like that. And I'm not saying you probably didn't, but I need to see some juicy evidence. We've because... also seen developers be sent like pizza by people too, like literally like people yeah, have sent like pizza for like the entire, it's happened a few places, I think, yeah. like like meals sent to the developers. Again, though, I'm, I'm just calling it as it is. I just I, I want to see somebody. Some some spice somebody needs to send some pizza over to 343 about now because things are not going too well over there they need no to no no they don't need any pizza send they, them some protein shakes and like some energy drinks or something i don't i don't know what they got a big head because of the pizza from mcc that's what happened <laughs> oh it was the turning point that's where it all started to go downhill was the what's the pizza uh do you hear chris pratt is gonna be a new character in halo season two are you lying or like, yeah, I'm okay, okay. I'm, like, uh, I'm not going to be excited for it, but like, man, how awesome would that be to see Halo get canceled in more ways than just being a bad game, I guess? Maybe then we could actually get the show canceled. We don't have Three a show. Three supports Christians. We don't have a, did you see him come out? We're getting way off topic now. Did you see him come out and say he's not a Christian? He doesn't even go to church. 
he says, yeah, he, he's like, I don't even really go to church that much. He said he goes to church, but he doesn't go to like he didn't go to the one the that he was he, he didn't go yeah. to the one that he was accused of going to. He yeah. was he was just like, I don't even know what to say about all this, but I guess I the need to set the record even straight. Said that too. The pastor of that church was even like, he doesn't really even come here. I hate like, Chris Pratt for other reasons. So I, mean, <laughs> I think I he's think a terrible he said, actor. He's not the worst actor. He's no, not no, the no. Worst. Obviously, there's worse. But yeah, I, I liked him as Star Lord the first time I saw him. Like this, I, like Guardians of the Galaxy one, I was like, like perfect for the role. Since then, like everything he's in, I'm like, oh my god, I just do not want to watch this. Like I tried watching, uh, what was it? What was that movie on Amazon Prime a little while ago? Oh, it's like the Tomorrow oh, War or something yeah, like that. Yeah, the Tomorrow Wars. Yeah. yeah, like all of his movies are exactly like that. They're like these generic, like put a hat on him, give him an M16, and just like let him go for ten episodes. It's just like he's re- he's redefined him himself and his shape. Oh like, sure. I mean, I love him most of all in uh, Parks and Recs. Yeah, I always one hundred percent. I love Andy so much. He's such a character. <laughs> like the, every office like show, I guess, has like their own unique identifiers of like yeah. each character. Just Andy is just always just so awesome. I love him in that one. So Chris Pratt has my love for it, but I'm not oh. going to I'm not going to stand him like I think most people do to celebrities these days. But as a matter of fact, I don't think I have like a like, a, oh, my God, it's that celebrity kind of moment. Like when Keanu Reeves was announced for Cyberpunk, I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah that's, little, that's literally it. I generally, I mean, I have actors and actresses that I, when I see them attached to a movie, I definitely get like a, okay, this is going to be a good movie kind yeah. of thing. But I don't, I don't have any that I'm like, uh, like get like truly excited for, really, you know, yeah. like, like I could name you a few, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, Ryan Gosling, uh, Barbie's going to be Edris sick. Elba. Idris Elba. Uh, I don't Lance know, man. That, that new Beast movie that Idris Elba's in, I'm a little worried about. <laughs> I don't think I've even like seen the trailer for it, to be honest. Uh, it's like he goes to Africa with his two daughters to kind of like reconnect on this like family trip. Their mother just died. And uh, they, they I don't know, like they're, they have some family ties there somehow. And is it his movie or is he just starring in it? I assume he's not directing it. No. Okay. Or, yeah, eh, yeah. That's not really. His, that's not really his but problem. The, I mean, the whole movie sure is like, like let's get him in there. They get attacked by this like giant lion, and they're just running from this giant lion the whole movie. I'm just like, ah, I don't know about this one. It's you know very what? Generic. Okay, I've seen a little not bit. Not saying of it the acting Twitter. isn't good or something. You know, like yeah, I'm not trying to take away about. from the. It's like ah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, like if, if I were to get excited about like my favorite actor or actress, I guess. Um, I mean, it's got to be Morgan Freeman, first and foremost. Does he even of still everything. do movies like like he, in 2022? He does. I don't think in 2020. I don't think he's done one in like maybe yeah. one or it's two gotta years. It's got to be in his 80s. Yeah, the dude's old. Him, yeah. of course, as well as um, Sir, what's his name? Um, from uh, X Men. Oh, Patrick Stewart. Yeah, Sir Patrick. He's in Stewart. his 80s too. <laughs> yeah, Ian uh, Ian McKinnon. Is that mm-hmm. his name? I think that's what Standoff. it is. Uh huh. Like mainly just the old, old actors. Old guys. At point that we're all just scared are gonna be obliterated. Hugh Jackman is probably another one up there too. But yeah. I think I'm just giving him a bit of a bias based off his performance. But he was phenomenal in Prestige. That was an awesome movie. I watched. Have you that? seen the Prestige? Uh, I think I watched it a long time ago. Him, Christian Bale. Yeah. Isn't it? Dude, it's a Chris Nolan good. movie, right? Yeah, it's a Chris Nolan yeah. movie. Like pre, pre. Batman. Pre right? Batman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal movie. I I trashed the trailer for his new movie on Twitter the other day. It, the the trailer is so bad. It's got to be the worst, the worst assembled trailer for ma- mainstream audiences that I've ever seen. Like, I know, I know what it so is. I know what it is because it doesn't communicate what the movie is or why you should be excited for it whatsoever. Like, that's a. It's usually the premise of a Chris Nolan movie. Most of them you can besides the Batman. Most of them you can tell though. Like, okay, this movie is about. I know what uh, Oppenheimer is about because. Okay, going on break, guys. Give us just a minute. Hey, you here? Maybe we'll talk about games when we get back.
Or, okay. That was, that was quick. Yeah, I ran. Okay. <laughs> All right. Barefooted. So, I, I guess we should talk about video games now. Now that we, you know, talked about well, random I'm, stuff for 10 minutes. Before we move on to actors and TV shows and bad movies, uh, did you finish Resident Evil? No, and I'm not going to. I, I watched the second episode and I'm done. I forced Come myself. On. Come on. Mm -mm. I was thinking that this week. I'm like, man, we don't, Jedi and I don't have a, a gaming TV show or movie to crap on this week. It's just not going to be a good episode. <laughs> we need something. Well, we need Halo. We, we do have Halo this week for once. Not really. I oh. didn't put it on there. There's not a lot of cool stuff with Halo, actually. Some some leaked Forge mo stuff, co-op campaign. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah. I, I got invited to the co-op flight. There's controversy about that, too, because there's no matchmaking. There's not going to be matchmaking. And 343 was like, just use Discord. Just find somebody to play with in Discord. Uh, That's what literally everybody complained about at the very beginning. It's like, there's no couch co-op. There's no co-op. I can't play with my friends. Dude, 343 literally hit, ruined Halo Infinite for me. I said this from the beginning. When they, when they said no co-op at launch, I'm like, they should just cut co-op. Nobody's going to play it. N less than 1% of the people that buy this game will play co-op. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. Because don't, don't but forget. it's a staple of to, the franchise, you had to buy. You had to buy the campaign. Or Gav Game Pass, I guess. Um... But I'm telling you, I know it's a staple of franchises, but franchises change. I mean, they, they've they've spent six, well, how many months now? No, more. Eight, eight months making co-op that could have been used to make more multiplayer maps or or something, which is actually what's going to feed the lifeblood of the game. Yeah. Um, co-ops. Well, I mean, it's fine. I mean, I'm happy that it'll it'll be there. I'm not, I don't want to complain, really, but. Well, have you seen any of the uh, the Forge leaks that have been oh, happening? Yeah. yeah, there's tons. That looks incredibly awesome, actually. Mm. I'm pretty stoked for that. Like, once the It'll custom browser comes up, man, like, dude, I believe Halo will make a, a pretty decent return. I don't think it will make the return, but I'm pretty sure it will make a pretty decent return so long as I Forge think, launches with a, with a custom match finder. I think Tatanka is their... Basically, at this point, Tatanka is their one shot at, like, propelling Infinite literally back into the top tier of mm -hmm. of competitive games right now if that doesn't land the way that i hope it does then i'm not saying halo's dead i'm not one of those people i'm just saying i think it's gonna remain in the hardcore halo space hard, hardcore halo fan space for the foreseeable future my take is that i think halo will do exactly what you just said but eventually just like drift away away from esports and away from microsoft's long-term goal and plans because that's I mean, what happened with Gears of War. They don't get an ROI on it. Yeah, that's what they did with Gears of War. Gears of War is now on the back burner. Microsoft does not give a crap because they're making more money off of other other people's games that aren't internal. Yeah, and like, there's no reason to keep supporting a game for just for the hardcore fans. So uh, I, I think, what? I just think Halo, like, even with the battle royale, I don't think it'll be the saving grace. I actually do think Halo is gonna flop because at this point, Halo tried something new with Halo Five was successful in a lot of different ways it brought new audience in mm -hmm. but it killed off the old one so then they went back and made a relevant halo core game mm -hmm. and halo knew the new audience doesn't like halo infinite yeah and the pros that are playing in there don't like it and now the classic fans don't even like it yeah. so i mean i like it mechanically artistically I, I like about the game that we have i honestly have almost zero complaints i have plenty of critiques about small minutia but uh, I, I like it, but I, I'm really at the point. I was never in this camp ever, ever. But I think I'm really at the point now where I'm, you know, if this BR doesn't land and they really don't get like a steady content pipeline going, at least for 2023 with like, you know, like like three month seasons, like every other game instead of six. And so two, basically my expectation is three month seasons, four should be out. And then we should get two new maps every season. So that's that's eight new maps a year in total. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think if the BR launches, I think they could be in a pretty good place. Um, yeah. Every other, it, like a bi-seasonal new map update or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it could be in a good place. If we don't get that, I'm, I'm, I'm drifting towards the camp. As much as I like them, and I like a lot of things that they've attempted and or done with Halo, I'm really drifting to the point where if this doesn't land... 
Microsoft really needs to consider handing Halo off to a different studio at this point because yeah. I know I know 343 was founded for for Halo. I get it. Like that's literally what they were made for. But they've had it for what a decade now, and it, they have yet to. Again, you could argue they've got some 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 successes, but they haven't propelled the franchise anywhere uh, at all. If, they, if anything, right now it's unfortunately stagnated. Yeah, no, I agree with you, and it's it's so telling when another non Halo studio works on Halo and creates a very authentic, very good Halo experience. Creative Assembly, whenever they made mm-hmm. Halo Wars Two, the best return to the franchise that like people set up have Halo seen. Infinite, but literally, it was a yeah with, it with set the up Halo and Infinite. stuff. <laughs> Yeah, and then they just said, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, put Halo Wars 2 on the back burner and we'll forget that story was ever told. Take the girlfriend's here. (laughs) There she is. Yuki! Hello. Um, But as far as, like, uh, you know, passing it off to another studio, I think I'm pretty much down for it at this point. Same thing for Coalition and Gears of War, because the people who did Gears Tactics went back into the Gears... Yeah everything properly yeah but yep. and I heard actually good things. They're, they're games that nobody really cares about unfortunately. yeah i mean they are in fairness gears tactics was always going to be a niche game i heard it's a really good one though yeah. i mean that 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 genre doesn't appeal to everyone but i heard they did a great job with it man did you know courage uh jack dunlop actually played that he was like this is like my favorite game this year Under it no i didn't i did yeah he played it he was like this game's a masterpiece he loved it a lot of people love those XCOM style games i mean I don't know how many, but. What? Oh, it's moldy now? Oh, I'm throw it away then. It wasn't moldy yesterday. You want bread? I wonder what that's why I've been getting headaches. Moldy bread. <laughs> oh, it wasn't green when I was eating them. Check the milk, too. No, it's lactate, so it takes like forever. For okay. <laughs> You're safe. Yes, I'm on camera. Just go sit down. Don't draw attention to it and then nobody will see you. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's, we'll see what happens. I think Microsoft's still in a pretty bad position right now, even with its like banger games. Like they've had a chance with Gears 5 and kind of the same things with Halo Infinite. It's just with like their old they, IP. Yeah, they're in yeah. weird positions with almost all of them. <laughs> it's... And you look seriously across the board. I mean, you look at Rare. See if these was a big success, but like all of Rare's literally treasure trove of IP, like dead. Um, you know what? It's so easy. I don't know why Microsoft doesn't look at like its competitors or its like third party like partners and just goes, wow, I could definitely do that. Like legit, you could sell a $70 version of a Halo Combat Evolved Resident Evil style remaster. And like you could see so much success. Imagine out of that. handing Halo to to id Software to make to make oh. don't, don't even do a multiplayer. Just just do a just give them like three years to make a a make it. Don't even have it have Master Chief. You know, make it because so you can really go places like really dark. Uh, you know, f- maybe flood centered. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do so well. ODST yeah. like, style so story. Sense. Or some, I, I, I don't know. Uh, or another, just another Spartan. Just make up another Spartan who's just a badass, you know? Like, would anybody really complain? Like, who, the people who do, I don't give a shit. Like, you the don't know, thing, you don't know what fun is. The only thing keeping Microsoft from doing that is Where's Cortana? Where's Cortana, guys? Ugh. A bunch of weirdos working at 343 these days, I swear. There's like, it's like, I should have a few minutes that work there. They're, they're not weirdos. <laughs> they don't work on like the development team, yeah. thankfully. So they, they get the pass. Like tech guys or whatever. Yeah. Um. All right. So let's talk Ubisoft because I almost been, drank that. You're lucky. We've been unleashing on 343. I definitely want to unleash on, on Ubisoft. What's up, Hobbs? Uh, so Ubisoft has been on my bad list for a while. Um, to me, after Rainbow Six Siege, they haven't had many successes. And Rainbow Six Siege is like 10 years old now. They've got Assassin's Creed, obviously. Commercial success. Thanks to Nintendo, they've got Mario plus Rabbids. Other than that, they've been launching like fail after fail after fail after fail. So uh, I'm still salty about Hyperscape being shut down, uh, which was a good game. No, it wasn't. 
Well, it wasn't for everybody. That's okay. But <laughs> it, it was a well-developed game. It was a polished game. It, it had some balance issues. It was but... definitely better. It's definitely better than like what other games were out in the market. For a, like, it deserved a more credit than it got. Yeah. It shouldn't have died. But this week, uh, a whole bunch of Ubisoft stuff came out. Some official stuff. And then I think a lot of like salty Ubisoft devs started calling up uh, game journalists and telling them like literally everything. But the official news is that Ghost Recon Frontline, which was their... Uh, next battle royale game it was a you know first person br in the ghost recon universe which was just announced like i want to say six to nine months ago and was supposed to come out like a month later and then they backed off because the fans were like not happy about it and then they went all super secret and then they canceled it they also canceled splinter cell vr and two other unannounced projects and there's more but let, let's start there. <laughs> what do you, what do you, what, what's your take Spl on this and what's going Splinter on Cell. at Ubisoft? Splinter Cell VR one sounds cool, but who the hell asked for it after yeah. like years? I can see the years of waiting. That. Yeah, I can see a cancel for that. Of course, nobody wants to play that shit. Second, like another battle royale for a very old franchise. Like Ghost Recon is like so far behind on any kind of like capital in the gaming ecosystem right now. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody even remembers like the most recent Ghost Recon game besides like, what was it? Badlands, Wildlands or whatever the hell it was. Uh, and I don't even. I think that's two, the last two. I think it's yeah. literally called like Badlands and Wildlands. There was one or Breakpoint, I think was one of them, like Wildlands Breakpoint. and Breakpoint or something like that. Breakpoint. Yeah, those were like the last two. Turning Ghost like... Recon into a co-op shooter was stupid. Yeah. Man, dude, that Ghost Recon Future Soldier game was so cool at the time, dude. man. Ghost Recon, this is what gets me about Ghost Recon. Ghost Recon started as a hardcore first person PvP only game, like super hardcore. In the early days of FPS, you couldn't even have your gun on the screen. You had crosshairs and that was it. And uh, super realistic. And then it kind of had some reinvigorations and advancements with like, yeah, like Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter. Um, there's a couple other ones in there. And then they turned it into I don't, what I can't figure out is they can't. It doesn't seem like they literally can decide what to do with any of their franchises. Like, so if they turn Ghost Recon into. OK, it's going to be a co-op shooter. And then they're like, OK, now we're going to make it a battle royale. Whoops. Uh, fans don't like the battle royale. Cancel the battle royale. So then they have uh, that Tom Clancy's X Defiant game, which is like a punk rock call of duty with the tom clancy name on it so they took the tom clancy name off of it because fans didn't like that and then they announced uh what came out recently that they're doing a division battle royale now which was a which was canceled in favor of the ghost recon one because supposedly it wasn't good enough so now they canceled the ghost recon one and they're like oh guys go back to the division one go back to that so, so they've got like three different division games in development no Ghost Recon games. I I just I feels like they don't even know what to do with their own IP when it, it should be obvious. Like leave Rainbow Six. It's doing fine the way it is. Make one of them a battle royale and stick with it. And the division is like a looter shooter. Like that's what it should be. Like that's its identity. Yeah. Like I just it's like mind blowing. I feel like they're probably trying to play catch up against like the rest of the competition because you got games like Tarkov, you got games. Uh, Why don't they like, make a Tarkov? Uh, <laughs> like, they literally fine. could make a Tarkov. There's like so much Ghost money Recon in Tarkov. Like, their bank. Yeah, they, they have so much money in their bank. I don't see why they don't. But like, I think they look up these other games and go, we can't compete with that. And maybe they're too stubborn to rip off a what is a, essentially an indie developer's idea. And I'm yeah. pretty sure that's actually some. If that's the case, I want to say that's a pretty good lens right I mean, there. You Battle don't want Royale do was a any developer's idea to begin with i mean yeah. literally it was a modern yeah. yeah it was and the only reason why fortnite got away with it was because it was the first to do it and yeah. i think if people do it now i think people would actually not care honestly at this point no. i'm pretty sure the people i'm pretty sure people playing tarkov would love a very hyper realistic similar experience but with a much larger budget mm -hmm. and a much larger pipeline of money and like what you're gonna yeah. do with your road AAA. and I said the same thing about Ghost Recon Frontline. I was like, yeah, I know a lot of people cringe, like, oh my God, another battle royale and stuff. But it's like, if they made a super polished, but realistic battle royale, like in the vein of PUBG, that was more like AAA and like big budget, 
It's got Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon in the name. Like that could do well. But yeah. they but they what they rolled out was like more arcadey and and like it was like a blend between Apex and Warzone. No disrespect to either of two of those games. But it's like they have no idea of like where their games should be and like what their audience is. And they're just getting scared. Like everything they announce, it seems like they announce it, fans don't like it, and they're like, oh my God, what do we do? And then they like they're they're right now they're literally just canceling things like left and right like there's another it came out um jeff grubb said they just released that roller champions game like a month or two ago and they're like yeah they're shutting it down after season three they already know it's it's they, it's no, DOA. They, 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 those people actually came out earlier today i saw that they said no we're not canceling i don't believe fine. it for a second i don't believe it for a second look what ubisoft is doing like well i mean like all of that is also not hard to confirm you know yeah yeah it's not hard to confirm just yet. I don't want to give Ubisoft the benefit of that. Like 100%. I'm with you. Like they can yeah. absolutely fuck off with like their, whatever that is their plan is doing. I'm okay with them not releasing an, a new Assassin's Creed the past year and two now, because yeah. we would have seen a new Assassin's Creed be announced by now. It used to be annual. Um, yeah. And then now we don't have anything, which is pretty dope. Actually. I'm excited to see what they yeah, do. Make with the it, next one really good. Yeah. But like, here's also something that they are doing is that they're sitting and camping too hard on their current IP. Mm-hmm. So like, they really rely on Assassin's Creed to really drive that commercial success. Yeah. It will do it no matter what. It doesn't care what your prop, what your what you wish Assassin's Creed was in the past. Like that game is going sells. to be successful. Yeah. yeah, and they're usually pretty good. Like my brother loved. Uh, I heard Valhalla. the last one was good. Was it Valhalla or was it? Uh, I think yeah, there was, was another one before that that was decent, wasn't there? Before that one was uh, Odyssey, and the one before that was Origins. I, I heard all three. There of those was one in, really or- in Egypt, right? Yep, that was uh, Origins. That one yeah. came out in like twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen. All three of them are good. I played them and I've been wanting to replay Odyssey uh, because it got the 60 frame boost upgrade mm-hmm. and so did Origins. Like those are phenomenal games. They're just grindy and long as hell. Mm-hmm. Plus they're also not like my old old school Assassin's 1 through 4 like uh, yeah. Assassin's Creed games. Um, but I mean at the same time they, they're too campy on them. So like yeah. an example of like being too campy is like Far Cry. Like they rely on Far Cry too much. And mm-hmm. Far Cry is not exactly evolved to do anything new. No, like that one DLC that they had, where included like Voss and like all these other antagonists from the previous games. Like you, you get to play as them. Like the, that was kind of the cool. best stuff Far Cry does is like when they get these like weird niche ideas and they actually like build like a almost like a miniature game around it. Like uh, the Far Cry Three Blood Dragon was like very well, very well liked. Far Cry Primal was very well liked because it broke the formula. And then uh, like like Far Cry was it six did like a Stranger Things DLC. It's like, that's cool. But like the main games that they're they're launching, like you said, they're just they're all it's like the same thing. It's very similar over and over and over again. And they just rely on it like, okay, we can sell at least five million if we release a new Far Cry. Oh, one second. I just got a warning text message about a purchase that i didn't make and okay it's a, it's a it's a fake one you gotta yeah. tell me what it is oh okay yeah I, i'm not clicking the link they texted yeah. it to me <laughs> i've which, got one of those recently too yeah i'm like i'm not M- gonna click on that mt bank and i don't have an mt bank account so that one was pretty easy yeah to decipher. it was like <laughs> it was like best buy and it says you have a chase bank unrecognized transaction i'm like i'm gonna use chase yeah whoops um so also something I want to add, I, I really think that Ubisoft is strapped for cash because A, if they're canceling all these projects, that's a sign like, OK, we got to save money because things aren't going very well. Uh, they've also had I want to just add this on there. Beyond Good and Evil 2 has been in development for literally about 15 years at this point. Yeah, dude. And Skull and Bones has been in development for like 10 years and they finally like re-announced that. And like all the reactions are negative. They're like, this game looks like it's like 10 years old. The UI looks like it's from the Xbox 360. Like it, it, it looks like they're basically just like, you've been developing this for like eight years. Just put it out. Like we don't care if it's good anymore. Just put it out. Like, yeah, we just want to know what it is. Do we stay with Sea of Thieves or do we bail out on it? Just give us yeah, a sign. No, I mean, Ubisoft themselves are like, just like you've been developing this. It's has, you know, $50 million into it. We don't care if it's not good enough. Release it. Like we can't mess around anymore. Like I, I'm getting like I said it on Twitter, but like I'm at the point where if Ubisoft releases a game, and like even if I think it's good, like I'm gonna be hesitant to like make purchases in it because I'm like, are they gonna keep this thing 
going? Like, you know, like, are all these skins going to be worthless when they shut the game down in 12 months? You know, like, it's a problem. Look, I'm still waiting on Beyond Good and Evil 2. I don't care what it does anymore. I'm just so enamored. I didn't even wait that long. Like most people, I would be on Good and Evil 2. The, I actually played that super late. I literally beat it, like I want to say, like three years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. I, and I loved it. I, was like, I thought it was great at the time. Huh, it was a great game. Like, yeah. even I think it still holds up, to be honest. I was like, okay, there's this is a really interesting story. And yeah. then, like, the CGI that they showed off with some of these trailers, like, I was like, I don't know who the hell all these people are, but I'm interested. This Isn't is. It? Didn't they? Isn't it, like, not even, like, it's, it's not, not the even same close characters, to the same way. right? As the original? Yeah. It is or yes. it isn't? Yeah, yeah, it has Jade and it has. Okay, I thought uh, the Jade pig was guy. out for some reason. I thought, I thought the pig guy was back, but I thought Jade was out for some reason in my head. No, the pig, the, the way that they announced it was they showed off like a monkey guy with like some other like Afro character. And like it was. Thanks for the raid, Striper. Yo, thanks for the raid. Um, Who was it? Like, um, what's that movie? Um, Multipass. Multipass. Where she's like, Multipass. I have no idea what you're talking about. It had Bruce Willis in it. Uh, Fifth Element? Fifth Element. There we go. Like, everything... I, I haven't watched right that right. movie in, like, 25 years, literally. <laughs> the movie's so good, but, like, that entire trailer just felt like the Fifth Element, and at it was so good. At least you didn't say a... uh, Chris Tucker's in it. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, I... I you brought back bad memories um but like no it looked just like that it had a banger soundtrack the, the, the entire thing looked cool we we're like all right how is this beyond good and evil though like yeah, we were yeah. left off with a pretty hefty like you know cliffhanger at the first one where's like where is this picking off of yeah. and they're like oh yeah this is a prequel i'm like huh and then the second trailer that they showed off after that was entirely different and it showed jade and that pig character not even on the same planet anymore and they're like on a ship jade is like evil as hell looking <laughs> So we're like, so how is this a prequel if she's like evil and stuff like that? Like, what's going on? Now it's a sequel. Now it's a sequel. So I think it's been rebooted why... like seven times. The development well, they, has they, to have been. No, the development, they said that they've always wanted to like take the universe much bigger. And it's just like after each generation, the tech gets bigger and better. They're like, all yeah. right, let's just wait till the next year. And the guy who like develops and I think created the entire like game is like super passionate about it enough. I think Ubisoft is like, but he quit Ubisoft. Around. Yeah, then he quit Ubisoft, yeah. <laughs> he, he created Rayman, too. So, I mean, oh, really? U Ubisoft owes that guy quite a bit of, you know, creative freedom, like you said. Like, he's Rayman, Beyond Good and Evil, pretty good resume. Yeah. I didn't know you created Rayman. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I don't think Rayman's doing very good these days, but... Uh, Maybe Microsoft will buy the Rayman IP and then sit on it for 50 years. Honestly, I don't even want anybody to buy these games anymore, man. Like maybe it, Assassin's Creed. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you're, because I, I think, if if I know the CEO has said like, oh no, like we're good and we don't want to sell, but I've heard rumors that you know people are looking at Ubisoft because they're probably cash poor right now. But I'm like, what? And, and I don't want to be insulting, but I'm like, what? Because some of those IPs, I, I are worth money. You, know, you got Far Cry. You got the Tom Clancy license, but none of them are in like Assassin's Creed, obviously, is probably like three quarters of their evaluation. Like literally, it's got to be like, man, like I, I don't think I would pay a whole lot for them because they don't release a boatload of games. So I don't think you get a ton of developers like, you know, labor with it. And I wonder if like. And I, I mentioned this before in a previous podcast, like, do we have, are we at a point where there's just like maybe not enough talent out there for game development that maybe we're just seeing I think it could no be. interest also? I mean, do people, as a game developer, as a game developer, do people even have like the privilege to say, I don't want to work for that business? Well, with how many devs it takes to make a, a, unless you're making an indie game, which you can develop like literally, you know, one to 20 people uh, for, for a triple A game, like the amount of people that it took even 10 years ago, to make one triple a game now you could have made like 10 games with so yeah, maybe, maybe a lot of the talent has consolidated you know it, it, and maybe that is a problem I, I i know that like if you look at any gaming studio like any of even like the big ones like the legendary ones you really, where you think people would be like you know, every kid out of college would be like oh yeah i want to go work for you know who na name a company you know like some legendary company in your head sony santa monica or blizzard entertainment you know blizzard had 
culture problem. So you could probably probably cover that one, but you get what I mean. Like, like, you know, like I want to go work, even, even if I'm only going to be there for two years, it's going to be awesome on my resume. I worked on, you know, some legendary IP. Yeah. But they all have like a surprising number of jobs posted. Like not like five, I'm talking like a hundred, like in one studio. Oh yeah. If you go to like hitmarker.com and you look up like development positions open, you're going to go, Oh my God. Yeah. It's insane. And then, like, I feel like most people should go to hitmarker.com to see what it takes to put together these types of projects also. Yeah. And it's one person responsible for probably 30 to 40 people in a AAA studio is ridiculously hard. And I'm not surprised that things fail the way they do because of that. That's a massive scope. And that's just barely even, like, one slice of the pie right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, in my, you know, company right now, I have... I have probably 35 people under under my direct, you know, managerial control, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And then imagine running a studio of like literally 700 or 800 people. Like if you've ever worked in management before, you know, like it's not not an <laughs> yeah, easy thing. That's not. And then like taking care of every single individual one of them, especially in a time during like yeah. what? COVID. You know, people are people are, yeah COVID's still a real thing for these people whether you disagree with it or not and like same thing with like personal matters inflation yeah. um you know it, dude inflation here is a pain in the ass let me tell you what right now 90 oh, yeah. co percent co everybody's beef, costs are up yeah like five pounds of ground beef for 90 percent for 80 percent lean is like <laughs> legit like 20 bucks i don't know it wasn't 20 bucks it was like 15 bucks and i was like are you kidding me i'm doing five dollars I'm doing sixty dollars to get to work. I'm doing sixty dollars in gas about three times a week. So like one hundred and eighty dollars in gas to get. And I'm lucky because I do have a job that pays me pretty well. You know, I've been in management for a long time, and I know that most people aren't as fortunate as I am. So like, mm -hmm. so I can kind of absorb that cost, and it sucks for me too. But like, pricing where you're at too is significantly different. Also, yeah. like not like texas is fairly cheap across the board i think that, Busey's, man. Like, yeah <laughs> uh Busey's is going up man their pop their barbecue chicken sandwiches are ridiculously <laughs> overpriced now you can get gas yeah. for like 99 cents down a busey what are you guys talking about <laughs> shut up um but i mean like texas i think right now is so inflated to the point where it's basically y'all's your state's basic like normal below inflation numbers and costs so in this case, like I'm we're matched with what y'all are now. I'm surprised you guys even have food in San Antonio based on what I know about that city now. Oh my God. All right. There it is. There we, you got it, Maz. TikTok <laughs> it right now. You know exactly uh, what he's talking about. Um, so anyway, yeah, I mean, seriously, I, I think my, my biggest hope for Ubisoft is, is like, I hate to be disrespectful to people because, you know, like I, I understand, I think it's pronounced Yermont. Because they're French owned, I, I'm. Yeah, know. they are. They are French owned. Yeah. I think it's pronounced Canadian that way. French. Canadian French. Yeah, he, he, the CEO of that company. You know, he's he's built. You know, Ubisoft is a legendary gaming company. You know, and he deserves credit for that. But they're at the point where I'm like, they really need, like, new management and new direction because they seem so lost between all of like not knowing what to do with their IP. I mean, games get canceled all the time, but Ubisoft is doing it like after they announce a game. Like normally you cancel a project internally that like never gets announced, you know, like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, that's normally what happens. It happens all the time. Not like after you announce it and then after the fans are like, oh, this sucks. You, you should at least be confident in it enough to press forward at that point. By the time you announce it, you should be like, yes, we're releasing this game. And, it, and even if fans don't like it. To begin with it's going to stand on its own and that's what's going to propel it to be once they get it in their hands it'll be fine but they just Maybe. like they're backing off they're scared and they tried that nft thing that bombed in the last ghost recon game and it's like what's going well, on over there man well i mean i can't believe they thought they'd be successful in the nft business after literally having no idea of what it means to its player base like it's did you it's see so the ghost crazy. recon nfts yeah i did oh man <laughs> it's so crazy that like the average 15 year old can tell you like why nft sucks but a million dollar corporation for the <laughs> life of them are just like i'm pretty sure they're successful but i don't know if they're billion dollars successful i'm I pretty sure they they've because of assassin's generated, creed i'm not saying they haven't generated i'm pretty sure assassin's creed has generated billion dollars yeah, yeah. but i don't think that has 
even tip them to the point of them being an actual billion dollar company. Yeah. Um, but like, that's, it's so crazy that like these corpos just still can't seem to freaking understand it. And I said the last podcast, like, I think people just look at data. Like that's all they care about is just data. And they just I don't know what data ed- they're looking at because it, they're, they're making some bad decisions. <laughs> they're they must just be the getting data. data from like, I don't know. So same thing with like Morbius, North Korean right? data. Like what, what's going on here? Like, like what happened with Nor- with Morbius? Like Sony saw that like, <laughs> oh, Morbius is trending on Twitter. Yeah, that yeah. must mean we need to bring it back. People yeah. are really missing it. Let's like, greenlight the sequel now. Yeah. Now's and, like, the time. Same thing, with, same thing with Halo. Like mass, like Halo... Halo Infinite when that launched, like hey, Halo Infinite has reached over one million players, and it's just like I knew that was gonna happen though, I, yeah. cause, because of Game Pass. I was like, within a week, they're gonna be able to say that they got twenty million players, and they did because of Game, game Pass. It's technically, it's the most played Halo of all time. Technically, no way. I, Halo Three, I think, is still the most played Halo of all time, no, even if we include by, it with MCC. By by the numbers, Infinite is at launch month like the most played halo of all time because of game they're pass. adding more people who have gotten into it like we're, let's talk let's b- cut the bullshit semantics out bro. <laughs> that's it's what 100... i'm arguing i'm arguing what yeah, they're I know. gonna that's, argue that's what i'm saying that's like that's what i'm saying that they want to use the bullshit semantics yeah, to like yeah. sell their own product and like gas themselves up it's so stupid i'm gonna go back to so shareholders much. too and, and tell them you know that's why you see a lot of that stuff is that you're... i mean even shareholders at a point oh, gotta, our, our, got engage- to go. our engagements are up you know 37 percent, but we're only in the fine print if you look at it that was only at 3 a.m one day when we only had three players previously so we added a fourth one that night they need to get these 15 year olds man that just understand the culture to be their like intern liaison between the shareholders <laughs> and the people doing this and they're gonna go hey kid uh is halo good no it's not you know what but you there's know, you but know what the, the data here says is- what? What's going? On? The true test is this is I truly believe this. Any game, any genre, well, might be too complicated. Some games might be too complicated. But you put the controller in the hand of like a six year old kid. That's it. Can they figure out how to play the game? Are they having fun with it? If they can do that, that's your starting point. Like you've got something. If you put it in that kid's hand and they just like put the controller down, they don't like it, game's trash. Game's going nowhere. Serious. You can give a kid a, a controller in Halo and they can shoot a few enemies and they can figure it out and they can have fun. What are we based on basing the kids like um household off of though? Like is this a kid who put, doesn't put him get in to play an video isolated games setting. a lot? Put him in an isolated setting. Does he not get to play video games they a need... lot or is he like the average Fortnite mobile uh, oh, gamer? Okay, there there's some there is some obvious <laughs> wiggle room because if you've never touched a controller before, you might not even know how to use it. But exactly. you get what I'm saying. Like if you yeah. can if you can get a kid with a kid, you're gonna get there's a certain age range there where you're gonna get a pure unadulterated opinion that's not weighted by like culture or it's it just like are you are you having fun with the game? And then as you watch them play it you'll see they can't figure out certain things. And you're like, oh, that's a problem. Like, this mechanic is not obvious enough. This kid's... I don't mean, like, a literal three-year-old or a four-year-old. There's, like, an actual probably, like... Yeah, probably, like, you. probably like seven to ten or something. They could, they could do a multi-test. They think there are billion-dollar companies out there that can just literally get more than, like, five kids in, like, separate rooms and tell them yeah. to play video games. I'm pretty sure none of them will say no. That sounds a little weird and perverted, so, like, don't yeah. take it the wrong way. <laughs> With their parents. Hey, kid, want to go play some video games? With their parents present, yes. Are you, how old are you? Eight. Your, your parents let you play You're, you're perfect. You're good. You're in. You're in. Eight years old. You're perfect, son. Oh, God. Uh, all right. Uh, you got anything else to say about Ubisoft? No. All right. Cool. Because we're never talking about them ever again. Um, Not like we have much to talk about. Hey. Multiverses. Made a big splash wow. this past week. I should have said big smash. Fuck. I mean, damn. That's what I mean. Got, got it out of mayor. Yeah. An, unin- an unintentional fuck. <laughs> um, so if you don't know what Multiverses is, it is basically a Warner Brothers based smash clone. Uh, I don't mean that in a negative way. It's a 2D brawler. Uh, very much like Super Flash. Smash Brothers. Smash is the most successful one. Literally yeah. to say it's literally a clone of anything else is another one who the hell is the clone what the hell is brawlhalla a clone of yeah 
Um, so uh, it was early access. It's been early access. You can get a key right now by watching it on Twitch, and I believe it goes open early access this week. Um, have you? Did you play it? Are, are Dude, you I am it? playing the hell out of it. No, I'm like playing it? the hell out of it. Oh, I what love do you it. Think? I've got. I love it. It's great. It definitely yeah. needs some tuning. Patch yeah. is coming tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I love it. I, I'm even like, I even have like my PS5 controller set up for it so I can play. Because Xbox One, Xbox Series, whatever the fuck, Xbox controller is just not good for fighters. I do not like it. It's awful. And even with this, it's still a bit of a pain in the butt. This is the only thing I hate about multiverses. I can't use the D-pad for any mm. kind of movement. Mm. I have to use a joystick and I get so many misinputs because I'm just like... See, that's ugh. one of my big... I. To be fair, I'm not a super big fighting game guy. Um, it's just not a genre that I ever got. I've played a bunch, obviously, but I never got like really. I got into Soul Calibur 2 a little bit when that came out. Um, but I, I, I can't tell if, if it's me with the controller getting, like you said, like miss inputs or if like the combat or the characters that I'm playing, like I, I just aren't like clicking with me because I am having a lot, like a lot of like. That's not what I am trying to do. Like moments, um, the game is still definitely buggy. Like it's it's a lot of like bu dumb shit has happened to me too. Where I'm mm -hmm. like I'm very confident in what I've achieved. I think I'm a pretty decent player actually. Yeah. Um, I'm I've not. got more wins than I have losses <laughs> under my belt. So it's just I know what I'm doing. Who are you playing? And I know that the game isn't. Uh, right now it's Shaggy and Harley <sighs> Quinn. God. So, <laughs> I I've got a couple thoughts in this game. A, I'm surprised. I'm surprised it took this long for somebody else. I mean, we've had Brawlhalla for a while to really make like a mainstream like Smash clone because Smash is like a huge success. Like the the, the blueprint is there, and like mm -hmm. I'm kind of surprised it took this long for somebody else to be like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna do that with our characters. Because I think people have just been too intimidated by it, bro. Like you maybe. can't you can't exactly replicate a Nintendo game at all. Like name a game that has been replicated. That Nintendo made first. Fall Guys uh, destroyed Mario Party. Quit trolling. <laughs> I'm not trolling. They evolved Quit the concept trolling, and made dude. it better. They're totally different games, first of all. Second, no, like Mario not. Party. Mario Party is still heavily, heavily played. Oh, yeah. Also, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that like the franchise is dead. I, I, I just mean I know what you mean. Game design but, evolution. I think different, like maybe, yeah, I guess, I don't know. It's literally Battle Royale, but party games. Like, honestly, there's a million party games. To say that it was a rip off of Mario Party is like saying it was a rip off of like, it wasn't a rip off a of like every other party I game. I think it was genius. Oh, it's great. To yes, take the inspiration but, like, from Mario Party and do to that. To my point, like, no one's exactly copied a Nintendo game. People who have tried have failed in very various ways, like Pokemon. Genshin How many times Impact. have we seen a Pokemon clone? Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact. Okay, Breath yeah, of the Wild. Really, that, that one's a bit of a copy right there. That's that one has a lot more waifus rather than besides Zelda herself, though. So that's why that game's successful. Trust me. That's the only reason. I'm in an anime group. I'm in in and out every single day. Let me tell you, man. The oh, loons dude. and the waifus. Dude, child, I gotta, pop you keep talking. I'm listening. Day, I gotta show you something. I hope you, that this picture will come through. You, oh, you keep talking. I'm listening. Okay. Well, anyways, like yes, that was a rip off of it, but Genshin is successful not because of the gameplay. I could tell you that much. No one gives a <laughs> damn about that game besides the women that are in that game. But yeah, that's literally it. Uh, but other than that, like no other game. Oh, you can't see it. I can't see anything. I see yeah. a car, but I'm assuming that something. The license got some... plate says Hentai One. <laughs> I actually came across this vehicle the other day, and I thought you made it to New York. I have a shirt. I have a sweater that's coming. It's nothing gross like hentai related, but I, I have a sweater and I will send it to you after this call and you're going to go, what the hell? It's coming it's in from that. It's not going to give me a divorce, is it? It probably would. Okay, don't send it then. It's, it's, nothing, it's nothing sexual. I can tell you right there. It's a very, very common. I'm probably in the clear then. I will not be able to walk outside of this apartment wearing <laughs> that, that crew neck. I, I'm now you that I got to see it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I mean, like, Again, the Wii can copy a Nintendo game. Like, so many have tried, plenty have failed. I'm mm. like quite certain at this point that whenever it comes to why it has no one done it, it's because how can you compete against Smash? Like, they've it's always had the defined platformer experience, and it's very hard to replicate. Like, Multiverses does a decent enough job. Yeah. But God, you're just like, there's definitely a more premium experience to this game, and mm. it's Smash. And it's still like every time I'm playing Multiverses, I'm like, I should boot up Smash right now. Yeah. Then I realize that. I don't want to get mad and play <laughs> playing I, video games tonight. 
I I do. I, I think multiverses is a good idea, first of all. And I, I think it's it could idea. definitely uh it they've got something that could be you know could go on to be more. I've got a few issues with it personally. Um uh, for some reason I never thought this about Smash. I, and I don't know why, because obviously Nintendo has tons of you know kitty IP. But there's certain characters in the game that literally make me feel like I'm like 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 uncomfortable. Like like I'm like I, like I don't want to play as Shaggy. I, take, I don't want to play as Bugs Bunny. Like get these characters out. I'm not a child. Like I it makes me feel uncomfortable literally. And I don't mean to be an really? edge I don't mean to be an edge lord. Like like when you hear Shaggy doing that like stupid like air thing with his feet and it's making this stupid noise the like he's running on air. Oh, yeah, yeah. yes. I, I'm I'm like no, I don't want to be four again. Like Mayor, I here, I saved you from the cringe. You're not supposed to come back to it. Quit yeah. talking right now. It's it's so perfect. I love the fact that like you can literally be Shaggy and face off against Arya from Game of Thrones. Oh god, like that, don't get me started that, there. That's don't pretty me, cool, actually. Don't get and, like, me started got, there. If you think about it, man, they have so much IP to work with. I didn't even know Rick and Morty was even a Warner Brothers. Like, LeBron, I'm gonna be a LeBron like, main. And not believe they own LeBron James. Dude. LeBron that's James, insane. you see, you, LeBron's not voicing Bro, LeBron. As soon as they, as soon as they announced it, that's the first thing that popped up in my head. I was thinking of like going to YouTube, getting that video of LeBron James, and LeBron. Like tweeting it. They <laughs> should have let that man voice the character in the game. That would be so freaking awesome. <laughs> but the best part about the Shaggy thing, though, is that the people at Warner Brothers have understand the culture. Like the Shaggy Super Saiyan memes. Mm -hmm. uh, are you familiar with that? The fact no, that, but I believe it. So there was a meme going around where basically uh, on a, on the set of the Scooby Doo movie, uh, Shaggy uh, was a god, and they asked him to perform, and he's like, "I barely even use like half of my power doing that." Like it's a meme where people just see Shaggy as an actual Super Saiyan God form version, and they actually put that into the game. Yeah, I remember. Like that is insanely cool. I a lot of respect, at least on a cultural side of like understanding and it was obviously developed with passion. To, it was yeah. no doubt. Like, yeah, it has character to it for sure. Again, I like Arya Stark being in there. I'm kind of like, just reminds me of how bad they butchered game of Thrones, some of the game of Thrones characters in the show. But, um, that wasn't multiverse though that was HBO. that's what i mean it reminds me of that it's like this is what you ended up with you took this super serious gritty show and you ended up with a cartoon character like girl that's fighting that bugs happen, bunny man. out of it but um i i do think i i'm very curious to see how quickly they can expand the roster because right now i think that's the game's weakest um and I don't mean that as an insult either, because the characters that they have are all very unique and they have got their own styles and stuff. But I, I think like, I mean, Smash and obviously Smash has worked up from the N64 days over time. Um, how many characters does that have now? I mean, like a hundred and something. I mean, Smash Ultimate. I was saying this to my friend last night is that Smash Ultimate is the best value for your buck in comparison to multiverses and at least multiverses is free you have to one yeah. buy smash bros and you also have to buy their subscription service to play you don't need mm -hmm. any of that with multiverses True. the problem with multiverses is that there's not a big enough roster for it even though right you have like a large 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 amount of characters to work with yeah um and the reason why the develop like why wb gets away with it is one this is their first fighter platformer game yeah. they've ever put out this is probably like since brawlhalla this is the most recent, not the Brawlhalla, Nickelodeon All Stars, like since that, like they've got the they've got a little bit of new to them that they kind of get the yeah. pass for it. Um, and then second, it is free to play. People should be already caught up to the point right now. If it's free to play, you've got to wait for more content to funnel in. I think the roster is pretty decent right now. Um, yeah, I don't think there's right any now, problems with the people, the characters that it, are there. Um, I mean, you brought up a good question though, like how often and will will they be bringing new characters on? So. This is a problem that I have currently with like Pokemon Unite is that one, I'm stoked that they bring in new Pokemon. Mm -hmm. There are over like 800 Pokemon to use, right? And they use niche and they use cool Pokemon at the mm -hmm. same time inside of the game, but they also release them randomly and they will include them and say, here you go, new Pokemon, here you go, new mm -hmm. Pokemon. There's no real rhythm or cadence to it. And the problem is, is that that throws off the competitive integrity of it completely yeah. because every game, no matter what you say about it, 
there's always going to be a new character that will always be overpowered because the devs want them to want you to utilize it happens it a lot yeah yeah people it does happen a lot like the last time a character was underpowered was literally the australian dude uh fuse, fuse. from uh, apex legends like worthless and then he finally found a place but newcastle you know, is not, not very not well loved happen. right now either yeah uh, you don't see him any kind of like pro play but you know you see that kind of stuff happen and that's a good thing but at the same time it's just when there's too much content constantly mm-hmm. i think it does ruin the competitive integrity of it yeah. it also doesn't give devs oh. enough time to rebalance and remodel because the game definitely needs it right now i know like um i i think Le- i'm not a league of legends pro by any means but i think league of legends does this i know overwatch league would do this where they would not allow certain heroes in their competitive like in the pro scene for like a set n- amount of time because they knew yeah. either a they were releasing and weren't weren't balanced or b it was going to throw off like if you introduce those characters into a competitive setting all of a sudden like it was going to be it was going to lose the structure that the game normally yeah. had and they they didn't they usually don't want that they they do that with Valorant also. I don't think they ban characters, but Valorant is such a complex game that yeah. you can't just get a new character and off the road be like, I'm playing them. You have to be good with that character mm-hmm. first of all, too. But they do the same thing with like new maps, is that they don't include new maps yeah, in the same rotation. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some like, you know, those those studios, like those uh developers are actually smart, but also a bit of a pain in the ass whenever it comes to yeah. like you know, overpowering their characters. I think Valorant has probably been the only game where they haven't created such an OP character. It's not that they're not OP. It's just it's hard to really figure out all the complexities of how to utilize that character to the highest skill well, gap. And I feel like that them. game, because it, um, because like, you know, it's pretty much one shot headshots, like, like your gun skill in that game is always going to come first. Like abilities and characters are very important. But because that's like the ultimate, like, what's the word I'm looking like the ultimate equalizer, right? Like, doesn't matter what character you are. If you come around that corner and the dude's got you locked with a vandal, like you're dead. Like, just. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree. I, I, I always, yeah, gunplay is super important. I don't think gunplay is the most important, in my personal opinion. In Valorant? Yeah, I'd say that it's 100% team composition. Just call yeah, out. I mean, ma- I'm making, the, it's being communicated. I've barely, I probably played Valorant for like 20 hours since launch, so I can't speak to it with a lot yeah. of authority i think i've got at least more than like I think 80 it's a hours game. of it yeah, no it's a great game it's just it's a hard commitment of a game like yeah, matches can last like 25 to 35 yeah. minutes at a time like, that's i played a it i played it uh like two weeks ago or so and uh i had i had that problem where like i, I would queue i queue for a match and i think like, like oh i got like half an hour and then it would run like 45 minutes or, or more and i was just like mm-hmm. i can't believe this we were up like literally like nine to two and now it's like 11 to 11 and i was supposed to get off half an hour ago and yeah it's it's a hard commitment and potatoes here she will do this for like hours on end like she can play val forever Mm. yes i'm talking about you lady (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah i that's why i like pokemon unite actually just kind of quick back 10 minute games that's how long they are at least on steam nintendo um james autumn what's up have we talked about spider-man remastered coming to pc yet no we have not i don't know if it's on the radar right now for us but that's pretty cool not for though. me yeah that's what i, I already to say about it, it. no <laughs> I, I think it's good we we have talked extensively about how i mean jada and i both believe very strongly that sony should be releasing virtually all of their games on on pc period yeah and it seems like they're committed to it. Like they've already commented on God War Ragnarok coming to PC, and they said yeah. it's not too far away from the launch. The Last date of Us remake the they announced for PC yeah, right same off thing the bat. Last of Us remake, but yeah. they did say, "Well, we don't know when it's gonna come, and they'll probably wait three years." Is Spider Man Remaster seventy dollars? Also, I would imagine so. I hope not. I don't think it's worth seventy dollars. Like La- I the Last of Us is catching it. a lot of flack. Bucks. The Last of Us is catching a lot of flack. It kind of deserves it, to be honest. 70 bucks for that remaster nobody ever asked for? I mean, it's not a re... It's, it's, I get hate remake. this semantic. I hate this, I, but I gotta say it. just for I just say it because it's know. easiest. It's the first thing that comes to my mind. But I know what you mean. I, I, I've said it before. I think the only reason that we're getting this, this remake is because The Last of Us 2 was so controversial that I think Sony really wanted... They, they thought the best way to 
you know, build more goodwill into the IP is to throw back to the thing that everybody loved. Um, but yeah, seventy dollars is. I mean, it, one of the literally twenty best games of all time. But still, to pay seventy dollars for it again uh, is is a big ask. It's not even ten years old. <laughs> no, like this isn't an anniversary or anything. It's not even a ten year old game, and it's just yeah. getting it. it it just feels very it came out dishonest. At the very, very, very last days of the PlayStation 3 area. Like the PlayStation 4 was literally about to launch. Mm -hmm. And they did good by it. Like they did a lot of people happy with it and like oh, sure. it really did well. It's amazing. But like, damn, like it, the game looks great. I, I keep seeing people say, like, oh, it looks worse than like the original. It's just like, um, uh, I don't disagree. Think that. That's that's I, a that's I a think you could argue that argument. You could you could argue that the graphical upgrade isn't enough to convince you to pay seventy dollars again. Yeah, uh, that that'd be fair. But they yeah. are including like cut content and stuff too. I understand it, as I understand it. Um, but I mean, I'm personally much more excited for the Last of Us show than I am the the remake. Yeah, yeah. I'm more interested in the show too. I will actually subscribe to HBO Max for that. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> um. All right, so. I had to include this on the list because yeah, I thought you'd probably have a hot take on this. Oh, boy. Uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Teams is being turned into a social network, basically. Uh, and and I, I figured you'd have something to say about this. Microsoft, no one gives a fuck. God damn, bro. They the love to turn great. everything into a social experience for no fucking reason. And I can guarantee you it's not going to work. They're trying to integrate Teams into Windows Somebody 11. Somebody please clip that. <laughs> Nobody fucking can even wants to use it. They're going to use Discord, Microsoft. No one's going to fucking subscribe. I use subscribe. Microsoft Teams at work, and it works totally work. fine as what it is. I'm yes. not going to use it as a social network at all. Bro, that's so... like They already have Yamp. Like, no one wants to use Teams. Like, fuck, dude. Everybody has a hard time trying to use LinkedIn without jerking each other off about how great they are at using Teams. That's literally all the fucking platform is for. But like, Jesus Christ, like Microsoft, chill out, bro. No one wants to subscribe to Office for $20 a month just so they can use your social network team <laughs> product. I promise you, you're not getting, no one's using it on Windows 11 either. The only people who are using Teams on Windows 11 are the actual Windows Insider nerds who want to see your product succeed and it will continue to fail. What, what they could have done and should have done is just built some other social media into it like like log into teams with facebook or whatever the heck they want to do you know no, they i just need to let teams I, be its thing or that or that <laughs> because They're... too many people get microsoft can do this because they've got literally an ungodly amount of money to waste so they can piss away money on stupid ideas but like most companies really do get caught up on this and it goes back to the ubisoft thing too companies lose their identity and like what their product game service whatever was originally created for and what made it great because they try to make it a catch-all that is good for everything like oh this is popular i'm going to integrate this into it i'm going to integrate that and now we're going to put nfts in it and now we're going to make it a, a, a video streaming service and now we're going to you know and, and then it's so it becomes such a like a mess that that original thing that it was really good at doing falls behind and like people just but they move on to something else like oh, like 100%. tiktok needs to be careful with this they're taking over the world if they start monkeying with what tiktok is and starts to lose their identity as a short form video platform it's it's gonna die like it's i mean youtube's trying so hard to branch away from doing what it used to do and they've caught like controversially already made bad changes to what they mm -hmm. already did so well mm-hmm so dumb. I don't want this anymore, Microsoft. Just I miss Teams so, so much. I am, it, thank God. <laughs> I am not. I am not a a, a Slack person. I don't like Slack. Mm -hmm. I miss Teams. I love Office. I'm on Google Workspace. I fucking hate it. Like, I cannot get my friends that are my age to use Discord. I can't. Even the ones that are hardcore gamers, I cannot get them to use Discord. I'm like, what is wrong with you guys? Like, what do they please. use Teamspeak? I don't know what the heck they use. They use like Xbox Live Party Chat. Oh, that's because they're the, they're the casuals. They're not the hardcores. Maybe. I don't know. Well, they recently added, like last week, we saw Discord is now being added yeah. to uh, Xbox, which is good to see. You know, oh, I think sure. I complained, I complained Discord, about that whenever they didn't buy them Discord out. Discord should 100% because they're adding it to PlayStation 2. It should be yeah. the unified gaming voice chat service. Like, mm -hmm. my hope is that PlayStation gets rid of theirs. 
Microsoft gets rid of theirs and just make Discord be the core integrated voice chat service for across the board. Um, the um, the fucking last time I, I okay, so I was on Twitter and one of the guys every who sentence that starts party, with so I was on Twitter, so obviously gonna. <laughs> so I was on Twitter and bad. I saw something called the pink sauce. Actually, we're gonna talk about the pink sauce. After no, we're this. not. I don't know what it is. Dude, I've heard dude, bits and pieces. Know. I don't want to know. You have to know, bro. I went down the rabbit hole last night on TikTok. It was wild. Um, but uh, no, it's the. The, like one of the engineers who works on the party chat system for Xbox was like, hey, who has ideas or feedback that they want to see implemented into this? And naturally, everyone's like, put Discord. Everybody. Um, and I was trying to be the nice guy and be like, hey, your service would be great if you just stopped using Skype. Because mm-hmm. that was like a big, big deal whenever like the Xbox One was announced. It's like, oh, yeah, we're now moving our party chat system. They own to Skype, right? Yeah, they own Skype. Yeah. And they're, they actually, Xbox One for its entire lifespan was actually using Skype. Um, voice protocol, uh, VOIP, um, and I think it was actually pretty good. Like I remember, like my first party chat on Xbox Quality's One. Oh, not like, bad oh, this at is all. pretty cool. Yeah, no. it was pretty good, but it's delayed heavily by like mm. two seconds, which is not great for any kind of communication. Which is kind of what it terrifies me a little bit about Discord on Xboxes. Is actually is chat priority going to be taking place mm. inside of this? So hopefully that's good. Uh, but I for one am super stoked that I no longer had to use an Xbox party chat. Mm ever again yeah. because god is it difficult navigating that with like friends I use who are on it, xbox i use it on pc to play with my friends on xbox and it's the pc to xbox parties i have at least once every two weeks like weird freaking bugs that i require me to like either restart my pc or like change mm-hmm. my input device and like it, it, it gets really frustrating it's really bad and like for some reason, uh, it doesn't even utilize the microphones like actual like like a hard feature hardware stuff mm-hmm. inside of it. So like I have a Quadcast S. This thing's freaking awesome. It sounds great. I'm pretty sure I sound pretty decent yeah. right now. So yeah. It, it sounds like I'm talking to a trash can on Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> like I've tested it. It's it's dog crap. Oh, what is it? It is what it is. Um. All right, to, to finish this up this week, I wanted to just see Comic-Con was this weekend and a ton oh, of news. Pink sauce? Ton of, no, <laughs> you can have that monologue at the end if you want to. Uh, was this weekend and a ton of stuff came out of it. I just wanted to know if there's anything that caught your eye at Comic-Con. There's obviously huge Marvel news, The Walking Dead news. Uh, there was tons of John Wick 4 trailer. Uh, it was probably my favorite thing. But man, I'm just the most uninteresting person whenever it comes to this topic, man. There is definitely nothing in there that I no, care much about. No. I, I mean, I'm not a big Marvel person, yeah. to be honest. I'm not I, either, We've really. talked about I it. I follow it, but... Walk, Walking Dead is always good. I just don't keep up with it anymore. Yeah. I will definitely jump back into it whenever I find the interest to do that, yeah. to sit down and camp for literally two days straight <laughs> without blinking. Like, I will do that with Walking Dead. I think it's phenomenal. I don't care what right. people have to say. It, I like it. Oh my uh, God, but that just reminded just me of something. Just haven't really been too much in it. I, I haven't even seen the. I haven't even seen a single John Wick movie. I'm not gonna lie. Oh my God, you got it. They're great. Yeah, but, I, um, Joe Rogan told me the same thing. <laughs> but you should also eat elk, and uh, I can't do do like uh, do ivermectin. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a new Walking Dead game that I thought was an interesting concept. Oh, hold on. Actually, my bad. James Adam brought up a good point. Charlie Cox is back for Daredevil, which is yeah. pretty cool. That's a good that's a good sign. I will say that's a yeah. very very good sign. And I hope that it remains like TVMA rated R and stuff like that. It needs to be. Like the yeah. first Daredevil is actually phenomenal in a lot of ways. Not the first devil, but the, the Netflix series was. Yeah. The one not the one with Ben Affleck, you mean? You know, I still like that one to be honest. <laughs> Man, what was this? You're what probably was like, like three the... years old when it came out. What was it? What year? Dude, look it up. What what year? It had what... been like two thousand two the first Daredevil movie came out. I yeah, was how probably old were like two thousand two or eight. Eight? I had an eight. Yeah, but you like everything when you're eight. I mean, you, you could literally play like the worst movie ever when you're eight years old and you're going to eat it up. Like, you just like everything. No, don't get me confused with this generation. It was different. <laughs> so yeah, two, dude, 2003, you nailed it. That's exactly the yeah. year it came out. I was nine and it came out that year. And yes, I still remember it. I remember they released Electra, I think like a year after, and it was awful. Um, but I also remember the reason why I love the Daredevil movie so much was because it had uh, Evanescence. Uh, it had oh one of the, her tracks God. in there. Man, dude, those were the, those were the days, weren't they? Like the Matrix. Um, 
<laughs> the Matrix had uh, Evanescence in it. Uh, so did, I think, um, oh, Daredevil had it also. Who else had it? I think Underworld had it too. Damn. I'm sure Underworld did. I was a big Amy Lee fan. I still am. She's great. <laughs> um, so that when you said Walking Dead, it reminded me. I actually got excited for a minute for this concept, and I feel like it's the biggest moron in the world now. There's a new Walking Dead game out, and it's Facebook Gaming Exclusive. And the concept was pretty interesting at first. So it looks kind of like a budget Telltale Walking Dead game. But it was, you're going to be able to watch this game. You watch it as a community, and the fans weigh in on what decisions should happen in the game, like collectively, like as a group. So you're talking like tons of people. And I'm like, well, that's a kind of a cool concept. You know, you're streaming this game and the fans are all voting on probably, I assume, who lives and who dies and, you know, stuff like that. And then I, I actually got on to, you know, play this game. <laughs> it's the biggest pile of crap. And I know Facebook games, people are going to be like, oh, my God, like, oh, it's Facebook game. Why were you surprised? It, it's, it, it is scarcely even like a functional product by any standard it's like there was this one thing i had to do where like they put these mini games in it i had to like build a fence and you just like mindlessly click the screen and these like brown little like boards show up but like somehow like without explaining anything there's no instructions on how to do anything like the boards will just like not place and you'll just fail like oh like oh you ran out of time i'm just like I failed in putting a board up like this. It I, I can't even describe how bad it is. Like you gotta play it to understand. Like this is like sounds like the Walking Dead Excel Microsoft Excel edition. Uh, yeah, kind of. It's like because it, it really sounded like a cool concept to me at first. Like you know, I'm like, okay, they're doing like some hardcore fan engagement. They're gonna let fans vote on who lives and who dies, and that's kind of cool. The story will change based on fan input it's the biggest like it's not even like you know that like idea you have in your head of like what a bad mobile game is i thought it would at least be like up to that level like of a bad mobile game this is like i i I can't even describe it it's i can't believe that somebody robert kirkman or whoever like allowed this to be made they have um this one i can't believe you've done this there's like a mobile game. It's called like uh, it's not a Walking Dead game. But they've done a collab with a Walking Dead, and it's I love whatever Twitter feeds me mobile game ads because all of the ads are so horrendously bad. It always starts out with like some objectifying, sexualized yes, like always. woman. Like there's like one of like this one girl like shaking her butt, but it's like her actually tied up to a pipe for and some it's reason. While in. Like, like this is yeah. you can't see anything else. Yeah, you're like, oh, gonna pull, do, gonna pull in do, some ass with this one. Do, oh, do, gotcha! It's a zombie game. Do you remember that Walking Dead Bridges game they announced? Where you literally yes. the gameplay is literally <laughs> building bridges, but for some reason it's a Walking Dead game. It's a Walking Dead game. I think they announced that years. during an E3 conference or like a, the Game Awards or something. And I was like, how did they even get this through onto this stage? Like, oh my god! I think they did that with that one. It was like a like they're showing. It was like you know they, it was a reverse of that situation where they're showing like zombies and people fighting zombies. And then it like cuts to like the gameplay in like the last five seconds, and they're like it's just people. It's like the Walking Dead bridges, and they're showing like somebody build a bridge on screen. It's like what in the world? Does it have to do with fighting zombies? It's a two minute trailer of fighting zombies, and then that boy destruction. Right. Yeah, for real. Oh man, I miss good zombie games. They don't, we don't have. Well, honestly, Back for Blood is still a pretty solid game actually i wanted to say wb games has actually been on top of it they've got some really great roadmaps uh they've got a really great roadmap of stuff coming out actually they've got they had back to blood now they've got suicide squad game they've got arkham knights game mm-hmm. um they have uh one multiverses coming out mm-hmm. and they have harry potter hogwarts uh oh, legacy you lost me you lost me um they're for sale it's supposedly educated. for sale supposedly they're WB what gets, the WB Games is supposedly for sale. Warner Brothers wants to shed WB Games. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, supposedly but that won't give them like access to like the game IPs though. They just want to sell like the studios. Yeah, we'll see I, how they. I, who knows what they have in mind? I think they're doing a pretty good job. I want to be surprised if they just backed out. I mean, because they own uh, Nether Realm too. Yeah, I remember. Oh, I remember now. Yeah, you're right. I remember they were saying for sale, and everyone's like Xbox, Xbox. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I think it makes sense. I don't PlayStation know. keeps Street Fighter, and then Xbox can get the Mortal Kombat with the worst logo ever. Street Fighter Six. We should have a twenty-minute segment on, on on the Street Fighter it's, Six logo. It's grown on me. It reminds me of every other uh, over franchised. Uh, like fast food restaurant it literally looks like a taco bell logo that's logo. what it's like it, like take away the color they had a classic like legendary logo and they're like let's uh hire some guy on fiverr uh you know have him do like a I modern i don't like it's that bad but it's, it's not just, bad I, quality it's just it's so si- like it's simple so simple and it's clean and it is, yeah. yeah like there's like a whole twitter thread about like um artistic like P- value and like, like while we're going into like a dystopian kind of it's like when they announced the ps5 logo art. do you remember that <laughs> that was the only announcement yeah, that, was the, that was the only logo. announcement that's what they did. <laughs> <laughs> oh god I forgot about and, that and to be fair i don't blame sony for for not changing the ps5 logo because it's classic it works you don't yeah. need to change it but you don't announce the, the logo that's the same thing as you know, like you could put it in with another announcement, like, oh, here's the console and, you know, there's the logo on it. And but it was just the logo. Like in hindsight, man, like we we've been saying it. Each we're talking time. about ever, it, though. Ever since Jim Ryan came over, like everything's just been super weird. For with real, marketing. I, Jim I, Ryan's I, like, nah, just put out the logo. That'll be I, all we need. I saw a great video. Was, it was like a guy supposed to be a graphic designer that did the PS5 logo at Sony. He's like sitting there. He's got the PS4 logo on his screen in Photoshop. He deletes the four. And he hits backspace and he types a five and he's like, that's it. <laughs> he <just laughs> sends it out. Oh man, that was like, God, again, like we talk about it like just as much as we do with like Halo, but like, damn, Sony marketing is so weird. I know. And it's working so well for some reason. Eventually it's going to peter out though. They, eventually they're going to have to get back on their horse. Like you can only stay king without really defending your castle for so long you know what i mean well they're slowly running out of games here like once god of war comes out all we're expecting at that point is just spider-man and wolverine right i think wolverine's really far away too um wolverine i think think will be sick but yeah i think the middle of their ps5 generation might be a little bit um empty yeah they've got that last of us factions game supposedly um trying to think of what else they've got ghosts of Tsunami your mom uh two. And Ghost of what? How I met your mom? Tsunami your mom. That's what I said. Tsushima. Yeah. That was actually a pretty cool game. I do want to play it though. And I they've got like six thousand horizon spin-offs that we don't want. Did you did you realize how fast Horizon 2 came and went? Like they can't be happy yeah, with that. Elden Ring came out. They can't be happy with that. Significantly better. Dude, it. I don't think I'm not even saying Horizon game. 2 is a bad game. I'm just saying like it literally it dropped and it was gone a week later. Yeah, it really was. And I think that was because of Elden Ring. But honestly, like same thing happened with the first game. Like it popped, but like it only had like a, a I, little bit of light. And it won game of the year, respectfully. The first game but was at good. The same time, overrated though, time, I thought. It, overrated, yeah. Graphically like, insane. High. Love yeah. the concept. I think it, I thought it should have been like an eight hour like roller coaster ride game, not a 40 hour open world. Um, I, no, I think it should remain that. I just didn't really care much for I just don't very like open world games anymore. Blank, like every other. It, it was literally every other post-apocalyptic movie yeah. game, but with robot dinosaurs. Yeah, and like the robot dinosaurs are what killed it for me. Like that does. Oh, I loved nothing. that. I loved that really? part. Yeah, it wasn't for me. I didn't really like it that much. By the way, uh, I was like, I, oh, dude, this is stupid. Who? Do, why the fuck did they build these? Of course, you're going to be put in a post-apocalyptic fucking open, failure. Open world. Did you not watch Jurassic Park? <laughs> Open world uh Idiots. Black Panther game leaked today. Yes, I did. And you get to play as the heard, new Black Panther. I heard open world and I was just uh You're just slowly getting old, Mayor. You don't have time for all these open world experiences that you'd no, want to be. I'll just play multiplayer play. games for 40 hours a week instead of open world games and say I don't have time for open world games. That's fair. I'll play MMOs, MOBAs, whatever. I am time. pretty thirsty though for games. Like right now, I think I'm not really doing much besides multiverses and Pokemon Unite. I get to play Doc's game this week. You excited? Yes and no. I mean, I think it's going to be a cool experience. I think people are going to have to get used to what this is going to be though. This is going to be like real, like you get to play like two minutes of content, like with no textures on it. Like, you know, it's not going to be, <laughs> I think a lot of people are going to come in expecting you know, 
slices of a triple a game you know what i mean and that's it's gonna be much more I mean, that's what i'm expecting i'm expecting very much like content that's 30 percent complete and it takes two minutes to finish you know what i mean like that's what i'm expecting so it, it'll be cool to be part of the process but i think people who come in expecting to be just like blown away by something right off the bat are gonna be like what the hell is this you know like what do you mean that games take like five years to make and look that good like that's, what? that's where they got you with NFTs. They're like, no one wants to test a game that has an NFT involved except the people who do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, maybe that's actually a strategy. I don't know. Five Playing 5D chess, Doc? Maybe. <laughs> maybe he's above it. He's been playing 6D chess this whole time. He said he might take a two-year break to go work on the game and not stream at all. I don't think that's true. but I Because I, I feel like he's going to, if the, he ever floated that idea, they're going to be like, no. We need you streaming to promote the game. Like mm -hmm. that's like you can't do that. Yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense. I mean, like I wouldn't be surprised if he did, though. I will say that his streams have been like a little bit lacking, but that's because of the games. He does not like any of the games he plays. Like he's always he's doing like eight million other games. things too. He's yeah. he, he wrote a book. He's got the game. He's working on a bourbon uh, company. He's like he's starting his own bourbon company. Um, he's at the point where his brand is much bigger than his streams and he's also yeah. 40 years old so trying to be a dad at the same time yeah he's got a kid um i mean yeah i i think he probably should to be honest i don't think there's anything he's enjoying streaming because there's nothing on the market that he's interested in playing and everything that does find him he does find interested is awful um <laughs> or at least to his expectations he seems legitimately so. like and it's, it's funny because the games he seems legitimately like are the games that he doesn't play he, he, i'm pretty sure he forces himself to play like call of duty and fortnite and stuff yes j just to keep the numbers up because I, I i he really seems to like tarkov and i think he really seems to like valorant but he very yes. rarely plays it he plays tarkov to the point where it's just like he i think he overplays it i actually don't know i personally can't watch tarkov i think I can't it's the either. most boring game Me ever too. Just the sound of your feet constantly yeah. every fucking every second. time i watch somebody playing tarkov they're looking at their inventory and i'm just like cool go and watch yeah. something else yeah um uh what we just went uh at the same time did you hear that yeah i did but i, oh, okay. I was gonna ask you what you're gonna say because i was gonna say i think we're done pink sauce okay go so what do you know about the pink sauce what what do you know about the pink sauce? I know about your tweet. I saw it and I didn't like it. So there's this TikToker who like does like food TikToks and she has created a entirely new taste of a, of a sauce product. Um, she's been selling pink sauce to people online and it's been getting a lot of heat, respectfully, a lot of heat. Uh, basically, this lady just... She's made something that she cannot explain how it tastes. So she sells it to people and people are like, oh, it's pink and it's a sauce. Mystery flavor. Yes. And they're like, I want that because that looks. I don't know. It doesn't look busting. I don't know why anybody would want to eat something pink that it like the pink that she shows is like I'm talking Pepto-Bismol pink. Like, like my wall um, right here. Yeah, it's like it, it's not a natural pink, that's for sure. But she does use like ingredients but these are ingredients she buys from the store to make this mm -hmm. um so she's been selling it and people who have been getting that are noticing a lot of things is that one it's not manufactured properly like this is made getting in home. diarrhea or something like that they are they have got to be getting food poisoning from this bro but they are <laughs> legit getting a product that is one not manufactured and as well as sold safely the way that you would buy your normal heinz ketchup it's not bottle. fda approved nothing is fda approved about it and like the the back of the uh the like the nutrient nutrients and uh items and like mixes inside of it is so horribly written and scripted so like none of the calories per serving makes any sense on it there's like uh miss uh just against the law by the way You're supposed it, no, to it have this. <laughs> yeah yeah it is against the law she, i'm we're pretty sure somebody made a point that they're pretty sure she's using uh old ketchup bottles to put this in <laughs> and even whenever like you open it, like it doesn't have that little seal that you you break off, mm -hmm. like get inside of it. But what's worse about it is that every time people get it, the consistency and the color of it is always different. 
<laughs> like sometimes it's like just straight watery and the other times it's just like chunky she's like, just talking like garbage basically it literally looks like actual sewage because it's supposed to be pink. I'm telling you, dude, you're getting like a very, very light brown color sometimes. And it's chunky. And some people are like, dude, it smells rotten. Like, there's no way like this is edible. Um, so like now she's getting like a lot of heat and the packaging is like also trash. Like people will have exploded bottles delivered to them mm. sometimes. Um, so she's like, oh, yeah, that was my team's fault. Like we they just didn't package it correctly. And they made a lot of changes to make the like the packaging better. But then, like, then, like, people started questioning, like, hey, how are you making this? Like, the rest of your contents don't make sense. Like, you should be, yeah. And then, like, actual people who make sauces are, like, commenting on it. They're like, everything in here doesn't make sense on the nutrients list. And also, I'm a person who sells a sauce and makes a sauce, and we can't get through the approval process without telling you what is incorrect. And the first thing that you can tell when a mix is incorrect is the color of the mix. And this guy's like, it's called pink this sauce. Pink, bro. This is not pink. Um, and she, she they, uh, he also said that she's not being honest with what's actually mixed inside sure. of it. They're like, because people are saying it's supposed to be a ranch, basically that yeah. she's using. But she's like, I can't describe the taste. You have to buy it for yourself. And the guy's like, such a marketing she, ploy. Such a marketing ploy that he go, he points out, he's like, it, ta- it's basically a ranch what she's using. But it's pink. Oddly ranch. enough, when you look at her videos and how she makes it, there's like a tube of like some white sauce mm-hmm. that doesn't match any of the ingredients inside of the mm-hmm. nutrients list. So she's like, like ranch? that's, that's it's like mayonnaise. McDonald's ranch or something. It's mayonnaise. Oh, okay. it's legit man. She's just using mayonnaise and she doesn't list it on there because he said everything on this ingredients list, none of that matches the consistency of whatever this is that's on it. So he's like, she's probably using mayonnaise and there are things in mayonnaise that you can be allergic to. So, you know, right. like make sure that you point out that there's mayonnaise inside of this or unless you're going to get in a lot of trouble um but no pink sauce rabbit hole bro has been like a wild trip and it's just like it's not surprising to me that gen, like gen zers and gen xers are like buying into this product man it's like a it's tiktok just, challenge or something like like pink it's sauce. literally a it's a futurama episode wrote, wrote itself in real life i was gonna say so, i was gonna say something that i would regret so i'm not gonna say it um does it involve san antonio no not no it was about the it was literally about the pink sauce Okay. And the okay. and the challenge part. Um Ugh. I was but gonna yeah, say that's... something else. Dude, you said mayonnaise. I gotta tell you this. I don't know why we're talking about food. Uh my my uncle told me this weekend that he mixes peanut butter and mayonnaise together. And I was er, no miracle whip. And I was so disgusted by Ew. this. And I was like, that's literally disgusting. And he's like, No, it's not. And he, and he's like, Oh yeah, like you know, like my dad used to do that. And I'm like, Yeah, your dad is disgusting. Like like no. Is your dad in jail? No, he's dead, but Oh. Well he, he, he I died. Why. He died when he was close to eighty. So okay. um, but yeah. Close to 80, peanut butter miracle. Peanut whip. Butter? Okay, yeah. Do not do yeah. not endorse. Do not endorse that. Maybe that'll no. be uh maybe that'll be like a Dorito flavor next year or something. Peanut butter oh, miracle stop. whip. Stop. I actually had peanut butter jelly sandwich today and I had probably like the most creamiest peanut butter i've ever had like Dude, I'm talking, i love like, peanut butter i, put I love peanut butter too but this whoa Oatmeal. the bottle was hard as hell to open i had to get a clamp to open it up uh and then second like, it was just so creamy bro i was like not expect it was kind of gross i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i'm used to my gif bro and the h-e-b the H-E- i'm buying from here doesn't sell this stuff at Busey's. this Busey's peanut butter there's no bucky's near me <laughs> what is wrong with you it's like 30 minutes out <laughs> well I drive out there to get gas, and you're gonna use half a tank of gas to get there. Bro, it would probably take me like a full tank of gas to get there. I have a bike. I don't have a car. Yeah. Uh, All right, are we no, done? Uh, that's it. No more pink sauce. No more pink sauce. I'll let, I'll let you know what happens next week. Hashtag pink sauce. Let's just name this episode Beyond Them is this podcast, the pink sauce episode. Pink sauce episode. We'll get her on the interview. I'm still. I'm about 11 hours into my 21 hour uh, berserk YouTube video. Just so you know, I'm hopefully Jesus gonna finish Christ. it by next episode. <laughs> Dude, it's driving me nuts. The guy's so good. Like it, it, he's a very good narrator, and he's retelling the story very well. But he says apostles. With, like, like I'm like, Dude, there's a silent T. Like yeah, it's apostles. It, yeah, he, every single time apostles. And I'm like, dude, like, how could you not know that? Like, like. His vocabulary is very, very good. What day comes after Tuesday? Wednesday. 
so uh i want to say wed nest I, day or something I, yeah that's so i i it's it's a little bit of a, like a, of a cultural thing because he's from Spain. But one of my my senior pro uh, my senior esports manager he's from Spain, so he goes Wednesday, Day, Wed Nest Day all the time. I can and see I'm how like, you Antonio. might phonetically read it that way. I was like Antonio, I swear to God, I'm gonna <laughs> take your ass to school if you don't say Wednesday. Just say yeah. wins and day. And I was like, no one calls it that. He goes, but I do, and I'm like, no, <laughs> but I do. Not not anymore. <laughs> Love it. You know what? A guy stopped me one time. Uh, he stopped me at work, a customer. We're getting way off track, but anyway. Um, and he was from India, I believe. And I said, you know, how are you, sir? And he said, uh, I'm well. How are you? And I said, I'm good. And he, well, he walked like, he, like two more steps and then he stopped dead in his tracks and he was like looking the other way. And I could tell right away, like, He's thinking about something. He doesn't know if he wants to say it or not. You know, he's like in that moment, like, do I say this or do I not? And he spun around and he's like, let me tell you something. And he, he told me, he's <laughs> like, when I came to this country, he's like, they made it like a really big deal that like I learned to speak English and I learned to speak it the right way. And he's like, and I took it really seriously. And I learned to just, I, I like to think that I learned to, to speak it well. And he's like, so in the English language, I'm good is not proper English. He's like, and he explained the whole thing. He's like, your response should be, I'm well. And I was like, you know what? You are absolutely right. You're absolutely and, right. Yeah. And uh, that's awesome. And uh, have, have a good day. And then anyway, like every time we saw each other after that, because he was a regular, I would always say to him and only him whenever uh, you know, he'd I'm say, well. how are you? And I'd say, I'm well, sir. How are you? And he'd be, he'd be like, good job. Every single time. You can't believe you're going to let these uh, foreigners tell you how to speak your own language. He's right, though. He's right. Uh, man, that guy, that guy's capping, honestly. Ain't busting at all. He probably eats glizzies for dinner. <laughs> dude, uh, dude, we're never going to end this episode. This is going to go all night. This is the last right, thing I'm going to cool. say. I yeah. swear to God. My, I think he's like 11 year old. My wife's cousin was in my Twitch chat the other day and he's always putting words in there. I don't even know what they mean, dude. The stuff, the, the stuff you're talking about, uh, you know, cap L, uh, you know, just like all this stuff that I don't know what it means. That, that's me. You mid. don't know what L means. Come I on. do. I do. But he's always, I, some of them I had to stop and tell him like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like mid the first time he said mid, I was like, he's like, that's <laughs> mid. no clue. So anyway, somebody in chat put BBL. And he was like, I have no idea what that means. And I'm like, bro, you know, like all these like made up words that all you kids say, they make no sense whatsoever. And you don't know that BBL means be back later. Like, what is oh, wrong that's what with these means? kids? Yes. Did you not know what it means? I mean, I had a different version of what I thought of it. BBL? Yeah, big booty lover. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to see you next week back here on the Beyond Nemesis podcast. I'm Mayor Reynolds. Bye. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs>